you really marvel at how far science has brought us when you see those images. If you missed the splashdown that took place this morning at 3.27 a.m., we've got you covered here on India Today. Some of the most beautiful like images that will remain with mankind, with humankind, for many weeks and months to come, and I suspect we'll keep talking about it, is when the splashdown occurred, and we got the first glimpse of our astronauts back home, of Surita Williams and Butch Wilmo finally returning back to planet Earth after a 17-hour journey and, of course, a nine-month-long wait. Now let's begin by getting you a quick highlight, uh, in fact, of all that you missed out from the splashdown to the moment when the astronauts emerged. This view coming from the WB-57 high altitude plane, and there you see it on your screen. It continues to make its way back to planet Earth. Continue to ensure that the Dragon uh, spacecraft slows down even further. Big time this afternoon, and there we go. We have visual on four healthy mains view there of the reefing on those parachutes and as those parachutes, those main parachutes begin to inflate fully, four beautiful points as resting places for their arms. They were just in space moments ago, <laughs> so their arms were able to float freely, able to float freely. 400 meters. And splash down, crew nine back on earth. Splashdown. Good main release. Copy splashdown. We see main shoots cut. Nick, Alex, Butch, Sunny, on behalf of SpaceX, welcome home. We can see those fast Freedom. boats. SpaceX is go for recovery personnel. The astronauts will remain seated and in their suits at this point, but the onboard air conditioning keeps things temperature controlled inside the spacecraft so the crew remains comfortable. Uh, the capsule will be placed inside of what you can see there is basically a basket. We call it the nest, uh, dragon nest. So once securely on... Uh... Welcome aboard the recovery vessel. Recovery personnel are completing final checks. And there you have it. The side hatch is open for the first time since September. Yeah. Um... And, and there we do see Crew 9, some happy waves, smiles all around back on Earth. Oh, it looks like we're getting our next crew member here. That is none other than Sunny Williams. Big smile, big waves. She, like her other crew members, now uh, will be assisted onto the mobility aid. There we have it, some waves, some thumbs up, and some smiles. We're getting some views of him now as he egresses or exits the spacecraft. Once again, some elation and cheers there from Butch Wilmore. We can see folks on board clapping as our first crew member. And that is NASA astronaut Nick Haig, commander of Crew 9. Now out of Crew Dragon Freedom. Some smiles, thumbs up, and a wave. Can't get any better than that. Spent 171 days in space alongside. <laughs> so those were the epic moments that we witnessed early this morning. Let's get you some of the most instrumental images, really, if you missed out from the splashdown to beyond. 
harnessing being placed around the capital. Right this after the splashdown in the Gulf Coast of Florida in America, the uh, they were welcomed by dolphins. Gotta, the capsule is surrounded by a pod of dolphins who were seen circling seen around the capsule, actually. making for a beautiful <laughs> sight. to come and play with, uh, with Dragon. Now, they were... Uh, now at about 2.15 uh, a.m. Indian Standard Time, right before the splashdown, NASA released images from inside the Dragon capsule and the four crew members, including Sunita Williams, were seen sitting in a horizontal position working on the screens overhead as well. A couple miles away from the splashdown site. Like we're getting our next Sunita Williams, when she first emerged that from that capsule, was seen waving Williams. and smiling at the cameras. Big she was seen smile, leaving on waves. a mobility aid, considering, she, of course, like that they have women. something called baby feet, which makes there it difficult it. for the she astronauts to walk after smiles. not having experienced down. gravity for like so long. Our next crew member here, that is none other than Sunny Williams. Big smile, big waves. She, and like the latest other... images show Sunita Williams along with all the other astronauts making it back home to Houston where they visited the NASA Space Center. Sunita Williams was seen with an IV drip channel on her wrist. She and three other astronauts will now be going through a lengthy rehabilitation process because of course she and Butch Wilmore have spent nine months in space. But there's Sunita surrounded by people who were clearly helping her as she was walking along. Courtesy SpaceX, NASA was able to heave a sigh of relief that the astronauts are back home safe. Let's get you statements that NASA put out soon after the successful return of the astronauts, stating that the crew was trained for every challenge before the mission began, whether it was potential mishaps or spacewalks, or for that matter, having to stay much longer than anticipated. Greatly appreciate your interest in the commercial crew program and also human spaceflight. Um, of course, as you know, it's been just a huge week for commercial crew. Uh, you know, the missions, I think, sometimes seem easier than they are. If I just step back and think about all the challenges we had to, to launch Crew 9, moving to a different launch pad, uh, adjusting the seats and the, the crew training, um, and, and then, you know, over the weekend, uh, once we docked Crew 10 safely, looking at the weather patterns, finding this great opportunity that we landed at today, adjusting the timeline. Uh, you know, it's never easy. Space flight's always dynamic. Uh, sometimes it seems like things move from step to step to step, but there's usually different paths along the way. I want to tell you, we want to thank the Crew 9 team and the ground teams for their dedication to excellence, their resilience, their flexibility during this expedition, everything they did to have a successful expedition as, as you all have all witnessed. Uh, SpaceX, SpaceX has been an incredible partner for us. Um, and it shows the benefits of the commercial, public, private partnership that we have. So just, they just been a, a huge, great partner throughout all this. Um, Crew 9, in addition to the spacewalks that many of you witnessed, uh, they performed uh, just about 150 experiments on board the International Space Station with over 900 hours of research. And the work we do on the International Space Station benefits the nation, benefits people on Earth, and are the building blocks for going back to the moon and to Mars. Crew Nick and Alexander both spent 171 days in space uh, on this trip. Uh, seeing the arrival and departure of four different visiting vehicles to the ISS. Butch and Sonny spent 286 days in space, and they got to see eight different visiting vehicles coming and going uh, from the ISS. We stay really busy as we talk about all these uh, vehicles coming and going uh, from, from the station. Uh, Nick and Butch each uh, conducted one spacewalk, and Sonny conducted two. Um, that actually gave Sonny the record for most time on spacewalks by a woman and puts her fourth overall in terms of time outside uh, doing, uh, doing spacewalks. You know, all, all of our crew members go through evaluations, they fill out surveys, they do medical evals, so all of these things happen on every crew member. So we do get some unique data from, from Butch and Sonny based on their stay, but it's, uh, it's something that we do with every crew member that flies. There's always changes that happen on board, there's always adjustments that we have to make that, that all of the crew members adapt to. Uh, as you've watched with our flight schedule over the years, um, 
it's very rare that we actually get a flight to fly exactly where we planned it two years out when they were thinking it was going to be. So it's okay that we have these changes and, and they adapt really well. Um, but everybody gets uh, kind of looked at in terms of those effects and understanding just the effects of space flight on them. So. And here's a conversation that I had earlier with the former Director General uh, of the European Space Agency on this mission, what it means for the world. Dr. Warner, I'd like to know from you, you know, it looks all plain, simple, beautifully executed. How complicated is a mission like this? Okay, it's always complicated to go beyond Earth, to go in space, to go to the International Space Station or any other location, uh, and to come back is also very difficult because you have to enter the atmosphere and there you need, uh, because of uh, the big heat, you need a heat shield. So that's step number one. So the heat shield must work. Then the second one is um, you go, you are decelerated. You need to have parachutes to be slower and slower. And you, you saw that they have four parachutes at the same time with the Dragon capsule. So this is redundancy. So if one uh, parachute fails, nothing happens so far. And then finally, you have the splashdown into the uh, ocean. All of these steps are not as simple as they look um, uh, in the TV. They are complicated, but I'm very happy that all four of them are back. Dr. Warner, let's just talk about these images that came in after the splashdown. 30 minutes later, you know, you had all of uh, uh, the astronauts being uh, evacuated from the capsule, if we will. Uh, and none of them, of course, were on their feet. They were all taken out and then helped with the mobility aid. Uh, and it's also led to questions about how long really it takes for these astronauts to kind of adapt to normal life on Earth. Can you just explain that process for us? It depends very, very much what they did in space. So we had the experience that even astronauts staying on board the ISS for half a year could walk afterwards directly if they are uh, trained very well um, on the station. Uh, but by the way, think about this, what you just said. If you go to Mars, uh, it will take you longer than uh, to go um, to uh, ISS and back even for half a year. It takes at least half a year to go to Mars and then there is nobody who helps you out of a capsule. So this is one of the reasons I always say, don't think about Mars, think about the moon, yes, but to go to Mars and then to, to leave the capsule or whatever it is, you cannot stand directly. So therefore I'm really skeptical uh, to go to Mars. But on Earth it works and we had also the experience with other astronauts leaving the capsule and they could walk directly. It depends, as I said, it depends very much on their training on the station. If they are doing the training day by day by day by day, they can walk. And uh, what do you think, uh, uh, Dr. Warner, is the lesson perhaps, the learning for every space agency right now from this one mission, witnessing this particular mission by SpaceX? Yeah, but you see, this particular mission of SpaceX is seen always as, and you said it also, that the astronauts were stranded. I don't believe that they were stranded. They were not stranded. They were not shipwrecked. They just stayed longer. It was not planned like that, but they did not wait there and wait for help. That was not the situation. The two astronauts, uh, Sunny Williams and Barry Wilmore, they, stand on, uh, they stayed on the ISS. They made experiments. And it is good that there is another possibility, that there was another possibility to go to the station with the uh, Dragon capsule. They came with the Boeing capsule. So redundancy is a very important thing in space. And therefore, to have multiple possibilities to transport astronauts is one of my key understanding of what is necessary. All right, Dr. Warner, I appreciate you joining us here on India Today with your expert comments really on what we witnessed this morning for us here on uh, India Today. And thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. The challenges continue for Sunita Williams. What do I mean? Well, it's about rehabilitation now, how fast she can actually adjust to Earth's surroundings, to Earth's conditions. So for that, there are primary medical checks that will be done to assess her condition, how much help does she need. She's already been flown down to NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston. That's routine for astronauts, really, once they come back from space to be brought immediately to the Johnson Space Center. Because here, a comprehensive health assessment will take place, so will monitoring. She's not going to go home just yet. 
She has now to be part of a 45-day rehab program to ensure that she can readjust to gravity. It's obviously something that could take even longer considering how long she's been in space. She will also be engaging in debriefing sessions to discuss experience, to discuss challenges as well. All of that will happen in the next few months. So for her to get back to normal life is going to take a lot more time. And one of the biggest concerns for Sunita Williams and for Butch Wilmore is the fact that space travel does affect an astronaut's health. And these two NASA astronauts have spent nine months in space. So they will face uh, physical, psychological challenges as they now readjust to Earth's gravity, baby feet, dizziness, vertigo, difficulty in walking, which we saw also when they were pulled out of that capsule. These are just a few issues that they will face. Our next report tells you more. Down, Crew 9, back on Earth. A 10-day space odyssey that ended up lasting almost 10 months. Williams and Wilmore will face difficulties to adapt to Earth's gravity. The two may experience baby feet after extended space travel, which means they will lose the thick part of their skin as weightlessness causes food calluses to diminish. They may experience dizziness, vertigo and difficulty walking for the first few days. Even though astronauts exercise in space, muscles especially in the legs and back weaken due to reduced use. Prolonged weightlessness leads to bone density loss, increasing the risk of fractures. In space, fluids shift upwards and the heart does not have to work as hard to pump blood. They will require a period of cardiovascular recovery. They might experience special disorientation as the brain readjusts to the constant downward pull of gravity. How much of a role does age play? I'm looking at a 59-year-old Sunita Williams, a 62-year-old Butch Wilmore. Does age come as a factor? They, they look extremely fit. Uh, but also, do you think there are then special space medicines that, that add on that will, that will track them now that they have returned? Absolutely. Go ahead. Absolutely. Very important question. So I'll give you a fun fact. Do you know your your chronological age, as in your regular number, actually slows down in space? For every six months you spend in International Space Station, you age at a rate of 0 0.05 seconds less. But what about the biological age? You actually age faster when you talk about biological age because it's a very harsh environment in the space. Yes. Although your oxygen is 21% in the space station, you have atmospheric pressure, which is equally good. But still, the content of recycled air mm. is a big problem. Circadian rhythm, as you know, right? Beauty sleep. You need six to eight hours of sleep to heal your body, including healing your own DNA. To counter these effects, NASA and other space agencies have extensive rehabilitation programs involving physical therapy, medical monitoring and gradual reconditioning. After coming back from space, Sunita Williams and Butch Wilmore will take weeks to acclimatize. Bureau Report, India Today.